All right, so one of the reasons it took me so long to film this video is it took like a long time to freehand draw this. I did not take art classes. So uh, this this is as good as it gets. Trust me, it was worse. I had to re erase and redraw. Here we go. Uh, fall 2021, AMC 10B, problem 18. AMC 12B, problem 15. Now, again, I, it's, I suppose that it's been said, or I think it's been said, that you do not need trig on the AMC 10. But I feel like the people who are gonna be scoring at the top, no trig. Because there's too many times like this one where it can pay a serious advantage to those students. And I'm gonna show you at least some of the basic stuff, right? You don't have to have like a trig mastery, but there's a lot of, I don't know, competition level concepts that you can access um, without being like a trig master. So I, I would recommend for all of you AMC 10 takers to invest the time to learn how those work, maybe even doing the associated AMC 12 problems of that type. So here we go. Three identical square sheets of paper, each with side length six are stacked on top of each other. The middle sheet is rotated clockwise, 30 degrees about its center. That's this one and the top sheet is rotated clockwise 60 degrees about its center. They all have the same center, uh, resulting in the 24-sided polygon. What does that mean? This is one of the 24 sides, two, three, four, five, six, and six on each side, 24. Um, the area of this polygon can be expressed in this form where these are positive integers and C, the inside of the square root, is not divisible by the square of any prime. In other words, it's been simplified, okay? What is the sum of those integers? Okay, how are we gonna do this? This is the approach I use on the test and how I think trig can pay an advantage. Um, what I did is I first drew, uh, from this point, I drew to the center. And then from here, I wanted to know, okay, if I connect to here, I know that that's 30 degrees. Furthermore, I know that this is 45 because I just connected to the center. So if I came over here, then I then determined that this angle here would be 105. Okay, also if I connect right here to make a triangle, like a sector kind of, but it's a triangle with 30 degrees, since the side length is six, if you have six and six, the diagonal is six root two, and you have half of that right here. That gives me a triangle of a 30, uh, isosceles triangle with 30 degrees and three root two as its side. I'll take half AB sine of C for $1,000, Alex, RIP. So uh, it's half AB sine of uh C, which is the angle in question. That's the area of this triangle. And if you think about it, if I connect all of these out from the center, I've got 12 of those. Now I'm over finding the area, but we're just gonna get rid of these in a second. So what can we do next? Half AB sine of 30, you should know sine of 30 is one half if you know your trig stuff. The A and B are the sides on either side of the angle. This is an area formula for triangles. 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, so you're going to have 18 over 4, which equals 9 over 2. Now, how many of those do I have? I mean, it's kind of many. You have 12 of those, right? So you actually just forget that. You've just got 12 times. Put the 4 into here to get 3. 3 times 18 is 54. So now I've got 54 minus something. What do I want to subtract? I need to figure out what this angle here is. And the way that we can do that is you know that this angle is 30. How do I know? Again, this is an isosceles triangle, so its base angles are equal at 75. And you know 45 of it is here because that's on the diagonal of the bottom square. So then it must be 30 here and likewise 30 here. And you have an isosceles triangle. Let's draw it out here a little bit farther that has 120 degrees. Furthermore, its sides are, we don't know there, but we do know we can find here. And I'm gonna call that S. There's a reason I'm calling that S and we'll get to that in a moment. I don't usually like to use S. If that's 120, what if I put three of them together? If I put three of them together, what would it look like? 
it would look like an equilateral triangle with side length S. And how many of these could I create with three triangles? You're gonna have 12 of them, one for each of the 12-sided figure that you would have created by connecting all of these. So you're gonna have one, two, three on this side, three, 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 total of 12. Each of them, groups of three, you're gonna have four equilateral triangles. So I like to write what I'm looking for as I do it. It's four times S squared root three over four. S squared root three over four being the area of an equilateral triangle, cancel the fours. Where am I at? I need to know the side length right here. And how am I going to get that? This is it right here. It's the base of this triangle. What can we use? Law of cosines. So a uh, law of cosines is going to give us that S squared, the side opposite the angle that we have, is equal to the other two sides squared like Pythagorean. Well, we already know what they are squared. We did it earlier. It's 18. So you've got 18 plus 18. And again, this is like Pythagorean is how I remember it. And then you're going to subtract two times the three, the two sides without it. Just really quickly, it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C, the angle opposite this side. Don't memorize the letters, memorize the positions. The angle, the side opposite, like Pythagorean, two times the product of these two bases. But these two bases are three root two and three root two. So there's still 18. So you're going to get two times 18, and then it's going to be cosine of 30. Well, cos of 30 is root three over two, so we put root three over two here, and we cancel. Okay, so now what do we got? 36 minus 18 root three. 36 minus 18 root three is S squared. Now, we have S squared root three, so we're just gonna multiply this by root three. It becomes, 36 root 3 minus 54. And you're going to have this, right? That, don't forget, there's a minus sign here, and you've got s squared root 3. This is s squared root 3. The minus sign is still there, and you've got the 54. So you've got 54 minus a negative. That's 108, because you're adding. And then it's minus 36 root 3. 108 minus 36 root three inspect. Is the C, the inside of the square root reduced? It is, we're done. Is it the right form? A minus B root C, A minus B root C, 108 and 39, 147. Answer choice E, hiding down here because I had to make space. Hope you guys enjoyed this solution. I did like this one and I really like this solution method. Again, I know you guys probably found another way by dividing this up or whatnot. This seems clean to me. This seems quick. If you have trig on the test and you know a few basics, law of cosines, half AB sine of 30, that's all we used. Equilateral triangles, subtract four. Yes, you have to have the vision to see that, but you know, you'll probably develop that over time as you solve more and more geometry problems on the AMC. Uh, leave me a comment what you guys thought. I'll see you guys in the next video.